Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. You can see the motor right there over my shoulder. We gotta figure out where we're gonna put this. All right, before we begin the video, I just wanna let everyone know that this is my 200th video. Yeah, I've been doing this for a while. Uh, uh, my channel started off in 2009, and it's a, it was just a handful of little videos of just flying airplanes. Um, so nothing was done with building up until about four years ago. Um, that was when I got to Taylorcraft. So if you want to see where when I started doing videos, everything was rough. Uh, the way I spoke and uh, the way I tried to work with the cameras and the, and the audio um, was real rough back then. But... 200 videos later, I'm still not where I want to be, but I'm getting closer. So, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone that has subscribed to the channel. And those that comment. Like, comment, uh, any questions being asked. Um, I try to answer every question uh, that's sent back to me. And still being a very small channel, I don't get that many of them. But I am I'm aware when they all come in. So, anyway... If any of you guys out there think that somebody may be interested in learning how to build, there's not too many of us left that this is what we do, we build. Um, I, I do not only builds, I do repair and I do restorations. This one was gonna be a simple build and I turned it into a, a year plus process. It should have taken me about two to three months. But uh, yeah, it's, it's just a channel that I set up just so that those that wanna try it have a little bit of idea what you have to go through. Uh, your first plane, you will make a mess out of it. Um, but the whole goal with your first plane you build is you wanna make sure that you follow the basic rules and that it's gonna fly. Even if when you take off, cause we will still do it to this day, all my friends that are still builders, um, it's that first flight. You can look at everything on paper. You can get everything as measured as properly as possible to try to get everything exact. But you're really not gonna know how that thing's gonna fly till you go throttle up and lift it up off the ground and see what it's gonna do. Um, you know, luckily, I I've been very fortunate. Um, it, everyone will make mistakes. My first plane, um, when I got done building it, I had a little bit of a wing warp in it and I didn't see it. When I was building it, I didn't see it, but a friend of mine did see it. So it was just a matter of me because I wasn't using fabric like I'm using here. Um, I actually used a uh, monocoat. So it was just a matter of me just just rotating the wing and then heating up the monocoat to shrink it again to try to take the twist out. And I was able to take the twist out and everything flew fine. It flew fine for years. But it's the mistakes that teach us how to do things right. So always remember, it's my little saying that I got from people years ago. Success comes from experience and experience comes from failure. And that's, and you will have failure. So don't ever let that put you down. If uh, it's one of those things, if you, if you fall down, best thing to do is get back up and try again. For those of you that watched the very end of my last video where I was finishing up the, the wedge, the little tail section, um, I kind of hinted at the fact that we're probably going to be uh, shifting directions, changing directions. Uh, once I got the front end of this plane ready to go to paint the plane, because that's the only thing I've got to do is just take care of that part. Um, and oh, trust me, we're going to have fun with that. And you'll see as soon as I'm done talking. All right, the reason why I am changing what I'm doing is because when I went ahead and painted the big orange monster, affectionately known as Pumpkin, the big Taylor craft, um, the problems I had with the paint. Now, what I ended up using, this was the black, this was the striping on the side of it. It was Krylon Dual. I, I've used Krylon for years, and I like Krylon better than Rust-Oleum because it does set up a little bit quicker for handling. Uh, and especially with the temperatures we have down here, um, it, it just takes Rust-Oleum too long for me to dry. It, it's, I don't have the patience for it. Uh, because the thing is, on this side of my shop, it's, it's 13 feet by maybe eight feet wide. It's a tiny little shop to build the big planes. Um, I can't spray paint in here. I, I did spray paint my quarter scale Piper Cub in here. Um, and when I did that one, 
it was during the heat of the summer. I, I built that plane in about two and a half months because we had a an air show. Uh, and for me to fly that in the air show, I had basically a little over two months, two months and two weeks about to build that whole plane up, get it painted, ready to go for the air show. And of course I couldn't fly it in the show because three days before the show, it rained, 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 and rained. So I never got, never got to do the maiden flight on it. But anyway, um, the shop next to me through that door, there's no heat on that side. And that's, that's like a two car garage size piece, uh, in length, not in width. Um, and that's where all the equipment sits, the lawn mowers, the snow blowers, everything else sits on that side of the wall. So this time of the year, when it's that cold outside, cause it's, it's probably, I don't know, 30 ish degrees around there. I'm guessing I haven't been outside for most of the day. I've been inside. Um, it's the same temperature over there. So if let's just say that it's five degrees outside, it's almost five degrees on the other side of that door. So for me to heat that up, I've got multiple heaters because even though I've got heat coming into here, there's nothing piped over there. So I've got to get out there. I have a section that I'll block off with just regular plastic. It's just visqueen plastic sheeting that I use just to block the area off so I'm not having paint dust going everywhere. It's about three and a half to four hours with, the he with, with three heaters on to try to get that up to a sprayable temperature. So the thing is, is when the heat's on, And you're done spraying you can't pick it up for a couple hours so you're leaving the heat on and even the krylon that that works is as good as krylon does i like krylon because it dries faster than than rust-oleum and especially when it's in a cold condition the problems i had with with taylor craft was that when and watch some of the videos when I was spray painting that one because I brought those things in if you could have seen the frustration I had it was about a month and a half two months of being on the phone with Krylon I even talked to their chemist at one point in time to find out if if the paint was having an issue with the nitrate dope and none of them had the answer I was looking for um, so I had to modify my spraying pattern to finally get it to work but the checkerboard pattern on the bottom of the wings when I took the tape off, the masking tape off, it was popping the paint off the bottom of the plane. Yeah, that was aggravating. So, I mean, the plane came out okay, and with, I had issues with the, the paint. Luckily, we're on the bottom of the plane. So, when you're looking at it from the top, it looks spotless. But that's why I like to paint the bottoms of things first, just in case. Because, you know, it's if, if it's got the damage, if it looks like, you know, let's just call it crap, up on the top. Uh, you know, 10 feet away, it looks bad. But if it's on the bottom of the wing and the, and the issue, you can't see the bottom. So it, everybody thinks it looks good. And you know there's a problem on the bottom. So anyway, so here's what I'm going to do. When this is done, this is going upstairs. It's not getting painted. I'm not going to paint this plane until probably, let's just say about springtime so figure sometime in, in mid to end of march when it starts warming up i can go set up the booth out there and, and do it then so that's going to pretty much give us because today's the third of january so january february march three months what i'm going to do i've got new lighting coming in so i'm going to go ahead and put the new lighting up that should be that'll probably be a week from today so it'll be next sunday i'll be putting the light in getting the shop cleaned up and then what's going to come down, this little thing right here, yep, we're going to go ahead and start working on the quarter scale Balsa USA Fokker D7. Uh, and I'll have the plan set up. We're going to do a complete and total walkthrough because it's not down here. That's actually upstairs in, in one, of the, one of the spare rooms. Um, and oh, I get to see it every day. And every day I walk by, I, I, I just look at it and I see everything that was not done right. Luckily, it's none of the, nothing structural. So I'm hoping, and I got my, I got my fingers and toes crossed, you just can't see, um, <laughs> that it's not going to be what the Taylor Craft was. Because the Taylor Craft, we thought I could have that thing done uh, with just a recovering job in probably about two to three months. It took a year, seven months, two days. It was that bad. And the amount of time was probably somewhere around 20 
20 to 25 hours per week for yes, one year, seven months, and two days. Uh, so that was just figure out the man hour on that one. So for all you guys out there that have built one of those in the past, because mine, I'd rather do everything from a kit uh, instead of realizing that the first person that started working on it made a lot of mistakes. Um, any heads up I can get from you guys down in the comments section when I start? Because like I said, that'll be the next video. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm also going to bring you on in on what color, what color you guys want it painted. So, and it's going to be one of those things that uh, hopefully we can get enough people kind of chime in with, uh, with the color scheme that they would like. And if it's something that uh, will be relatively easy for me to do and not super expensive, because I do have some, some upstairs, some lozenge pattern, and I think it's quarter scale lozenge pattern. Uh, so I can kind of do it. I don't know if I've got enough for the whole fuse. I've probably got enough for the wings possibly you know top of the wing um so we'll see we'll see how that goes so enough of me yapping let's get back to work on the stomp all right let me show you what i have to do first I'm gonna go ahead this is just resting here this is gonna come out and what we're gonna do is we need to we're gonna the throttle cable it's gonna be a push pull uh cable itself it's not gonna be a solid wire um and this is where the throttle is gonna hook up to so we're just going to come in with a pen, get it pretty close to level. It's It can go up a little bit if it wants to. Because it's flexible, it can just, uh, if you got a little bit of variance, it's okay. So let me just show you. So that's about where we're going to go through the wall. So I'll just go ahead and just push in with a pencil just to make a little bit of a dot. And you probably can't see it through the camera. You may be able to, but I can see it. We're right about there. So that's where we're going to drill through. And that is going to come on up here, and this is going to come over to it's a high tech HS85. Um, you don't need to have a bigger servo to run the throttle cable. Right now, this has a spring still attached to it. I will be cutting the spring off on the other side, so it's just free floats. And trust me, I'm not worried if the throttle breaks on this thing. We got a gas engine. It's got a controller. All you do is you just kill the engine uh, just through the spark. So, so I'm not worried about that. Uh, but this thing here, uh, the 85 has a stripped out gear in it. So I'm going to go ahead and order up a gear set and put it in there because uh, everything else is fine with it. So what I have to do is you can kind of use this side for a reference, but the top piece up there across, I've got to cut a line across here and remove that whole top piece. I'll leave this nub still sticking up over here. It's just that with the amount of flexing that this can do on the top side, uh, which is minimal, I'll put a cross beam uh, that stands off, or just stands alone by itself up on the top. So that'll be fine. Uh, I just need to cut this little section out uh, just so that I can, uh, sorry about that, just so I can get the connection to the servo. Now where the real problem is going to come into play is this. Yep. It's the electronic ignition. This, this is exactly why I like magneto engines, because you don't have to worry about this. This would go here on the firewall, and that's the usual spot for it. Uh, I can't stand it up like I'd like to, because we've got this that's going to hit it. So what I'm probably going to do, uh, I'm going to go ahead when the motor comes off, and I'll bring you guys in for it. I'm going to make a cutout because these pieces over here where these holes are at, those are going to be plugged. I can leave those open. This is going to come through. It's going to slip on the inside. So I'll build a secondary wall, something, a little box or whatever I can slide into place. Uh, I think I can possibly leave this open. Not a big fan of doing it on the inside. Uh, but this whole thing from right about here, up forward, there's going to be nothing up there uh, because of the way the whole plane is going to be set up with balance points with the motor. I may end up putting another plate back in here to run batteries because this is right here. This is where the uh, fuel tank sits. So I may be putting another shelf in here to sit batteries back here to throw the weight farther back. 
Uh, I'm figuring as of right now, my receiver is going to go right about up in here. Uh, I can either try to run uh, the antennas back there, or I can just run it up here across the side, and then one down across the bottom or pointing forward. So I'll make this work when the time comes. Um, so I'm not concerned about that. So, so where the problem's going to be is right up here. So something that I thought was going to be, you know, one, two, three, done. Uh, it's going to turn into something I really don't want to have to do, but it's got to be done. So what I will do, um, and I'll bring you guys back. I'll get this all taken out, um, get the motor pulled back off again so that I could just go ahead and see how we're going to get that in there. That should be, uh, should be fun. All right, I have cut out the little box. I'll zoom you guys in in a second here. If you've never owned one of these things, go out and buy one. Um, it's a flush cut. And what I did is I came in uh, with a pencil. I just drew the lines. I used the two, I used the cutouts, the, the holes that were drilled here uh, is, is reference points. Uh, and then I went ahead, drew the lines and then just came in straight in and just plunged straight through. Um, and these things work great. That's through, uh, I mean, I got the Milwaukee one because I've got all the Milwaukee tools. Uh, I think it's about 200 bucks. Um, you know, it does come with the, with the batteries too. And as you can see, you can, uh, you cannot pay attention to what you're drilling through and drill right into the side of this thing and, and it didn't affect anything. So <laughs> got lucky on that one, but this thing I've had for probably four years. I absolutely love it. And it gets used on almost every plane. So what I did, it went through, I haven't built it yet. I'm going to build a cradle on this side. Uh, even though the top side will be, I'm just trying to figure out this. It's going to be, it's going to be a cradle and this will be strapped to the cradle. And, and I can't show you what the cradle is going to look like because I haven't made it yet. But this piece here will slide on through with this just being the, uh, the sensor. Uh, that's the only thing that needs to stick out front with the spark plug. Excuse me. It's the only part that needs to sit outside with the, uh, the plug wire. So this will come in, come off to this side here. So, so that way we're off to the side. We're not anywhere near close to the exhaust and the motor. And this will rest right about like that. And then I've got plenty of spark plug wire to go ahead and however I'm going to strap it in up on the top of the motor. So that's where that's going to sit to be out of the way and not have to cause any issues with heat or being too close to the exhaust. So that will work out just fine. And it still gives me about that much room before the, uh, it would come into play with the, the uh, fuel tank. So step one done. As soon as I get uh, the little shelf made for this thing, I'll bring it back in before I put it into place. All right, so I have made the little, the little box, the little cradle that the speed controller is going to sit into. And I made it a little bit oversized because I'm still trying to figure out how I want to, what I want to put alongside the, uh, the speed, the speed controller. My gosh. All right. And I did make it a little bit oversized. That was the whole purpose behind this because I can, I can always go ahead and put some wedges in on the side, which I will be doing. Now, as you can see, it stands proud of the box. That's because this is going to come out flush with the firewall right here. Um, and then what I can do is if I want to, and I may, I may just be able to go ahead and just put a, a small little piece of plywood, just real thin, like, like 64th plywood and just put a screw on the top on the bottom and just make it a little pivot so I can go ahead and just slide it and then rotate the whole thing out. But just so that it, it's held in place, um, and I can keep it relatively firmly held in place. Um, I'll, it'll, I'll be happy with it. So anyway, the back side of it, it's just going to come on in. So either it'll come through on one side and this part is going to be the little sensor wire that'll go through up on this side. And then as it comes out, I've got plenty of, uh, I've got plenty of line and I just see I lost a light uh, and it's back on again. It's going to be one of those days. Uh, so, and this comes out, uh, plenty far enough for me to hook up to the sensor on the motor. So, so we're going to be good with that. So now the way this is going to go in, I'm planning on running a couple screws through at least on one side. But what I'm going to do, uh, just cause right now I just want to get this thing in and those little screws would be just for added safety. Uh, so they're just going to be little, you know, micro screws. They're not going to be very big. They just have to be long enough to go through the, the plywood. And the plywood is, I think, quarter inch ply. 
uh, and just come through here. And that's just some spruce, some Sitka spruce, real lightweight cut out. What I'm going to do, and hopefully, yeah, you can see it through the... I cut a piece of foam. So what we're going to do is just take it with the foam in it. I'll put epoxy here and around the edge because with the foam, I can pull this out and epoxy won't really stick into the foam too far that I can't just go ahead and scrape it out. So this will come in from the inside of the fuselage, pull it through. And as much as I want to show you from here, and I will. All right, so as we come around the back side, and it's not too dark on the inside. There we go. Yep, so we can see how it's going to sit inside there. So if I wanted to come on in with a couple screws, I can I can just do that just to fasten through to the blocks. But it will have epoxy on the spruce, and I'm going to put it around uh, the whole outside edge of the box that goes up against the, the rear side of the firewall. And I will uh, get it all glued into place, show you what it looks like, and then we'll call this video done. All right, it's all sitting in. It's not 100% flush. It's uh, probably about 20,000 proud, which is good. That's fine by me. That'll work out just fine. Um, so anyway, that's how far that thing's going to stick out. And of course, the spark plug wire is going to be uh, wrapped around. I got to figure out how that's going to get set up, but that we'll worry about at a later date when we get this thing all nice and purdied up, sprayed yellow. Uh, on the inside, you can see how it's backed all the way up inside. It's up against the back wall. Here's the here's the tack and the power. And of course, there's a the little sensor that gets looped back around and heads back out front. So. All right, so as of right now, the stomp, uh, she's going to go upstairs. She's going to spend the rest of her winter hibernation where it's a little bit warmer. Um, and then I will be getting this all cleaned up because it right now is a disaster. What, what's off camera is our things I'm going to be putting uh, in the shop. Uh, the lights are coming in tomorrow. So those will be get put up. So you'll be seeing the light that's always over my head. Um, I'm going to be removing that one and having the light up around the outside uh, just so that it gives better, it, better lighting with no shadows. Um, but that'll be done, uh, over this weekend and, uh, and hopefully, um, next time I see you guys down in the shop, this will be cleaned off. I'll have the plans for the, uh, uh, quarter scale, uh, Fokker D7 down here on the workbench. And, uh, we're going to do a little walkthrough on exactly what I've got to do and where I'm going to start working on it. So see you guys next time back down here in the shop.